Hi again. It is June 24, 2021. Okay, I am in this video going to show you some evidence that the school boards that are ignoring the parents' wishes, I don't think a lot of parents understand that there is a very well-organized, intricate, well-funded web of opposition that they are meeting, but they don't, they don't see it. Uh, it's happening, and I'm going to go through this video. I have several other videos that I've already researched and waiting to post. Um, and because this is so well organized, and because we are so far into this whole new country, a whole new world order, with the economy sinking, tanking, free fall, collapsing. Oh, don't believe what you hear from those mainstream media propagandists. And a whole lot is going on. A whole lot. The violence is pretty much, wow, it's uh, growing out of control. Uh, across the border, I think this month was 180,000 across the border. Oh, boy. Well, there's a long list of agendas taking place. This agenda, critical race theory in our schools, diversity, inclusion, and equity programs all throughout the nation. Yes, it's coming from the Department of Ed, the federal government. But I had to stop my research last night because it was endless, endless to see how many organizations are involved in making sure that those who are fighting critical race theory get stopped. Oh, it's a mission. It's a Marxist mission. I want you to listen to this teacher who quit, Dana Stengel Plow. She quit teaching English at Dwight Englewood School in New Jersey. A whole lot of teachers are quitting. A whole lot of uh, those employees of you know schools are being fired if they don't go along with the program. I saw an article last night, 20, 20 teachers will not be back for school that the uh, in the fall in Loudoun County, Virginia. Loudoun County, wow, very organized, uh, behind the scenes you know, uh, uh, efforts to make sure those parents in Loudoun County get nowhere. Okay, listen to this teacher. Today I am resigning from a job that I love. My name is Dana Stangle Plow. I became an English teacher at Dwight Englewood School seven years ago because as a parent, I loved how the school both nurtured and challenged my own children. But over the past few years, the school has embraced an ideology that is damaging to our students' intellectual and emotional growth, an ideology that requires students to see themselves not as individuals, but as representatives of either an oppressor or oppressed group. This theoretical framework pervades every division of Dwight Englewood as the singular way of seeing the world. As a result, students now arrive in my classroom accepting ideology simply as fact. I've seen up close how this hinders their ability to read, write, and think. They've become obsessed with power hierarchies. I teach students who recoil from a poem because it was written by a man. I teach students who approach texts in search of the oppressor, who see iniquities in texts that have nothing to do with power. This ideology limits students' ability to observe and engage with the full fabric of human experience in our literature. In my professional opinion as an educator, the school is failing to encourage healthy habits of mind essential for growth, such as intellectual curiosity, humility, honesty, reason, and the capacity to consider multiple perspectives and weigh competing ideas. In our school, the opportunity even to hear competing ideas is practically non-existent. 
Sadly, as a result, the school is leading many to become true believers and outspoken purveyors of a regressive and illiberal orthodoxy. Our young students have no idea that the school has placed ideological blinders on them. Of course, not all students are true believers. Many pretend to agree because of pressure to conform. I've heard from students who want to ask a question, but stop out of fear. I've heard from students who don't participate in discussions for fear of being ostracized. One student didn't want to develop her personal essay about an experience she had in another country because she was worried that it might mean she was, without even realizing it, racist. In her fear, she actually stopped herself from thinking the very definition of self-censorship. I care deeply about our students and our school. And so over the years, I have tried to introduce positive alternative views to our community. My efforts have fallen on deaf ears. The reality is that fear and orthodoxy pervade the faculty. Last fall, administrators told us we were not allowed to question the school's ideological programming. And on at least two separate occasions, our head of school even went so far as to tell the entire faculty that he would fire all of us if he could, so that he could replace us all with people of color. This February, during a faculty meeting, teachers were segregated by skin color. White teachers were placed into a white caucus group, asked to remember that we are white, and to take responsibility for our power and privilege. I reject this essentialist, racialist thinking about myself and my colleagues, and I worry for the students. Will racial segregation be forced on them next? I am fully aligned with the values in Dwight Englewood's mission statement. Community, diversity, courage, and making the world a better place. As an educator, I strive to create an inclusive classroom by embracing the dignity and individuality of each and every student, regardless of their cultural or group identifiers. My humanist approach cultivates a mutual respect and empathy, curiosity and open-mindedness. I want to empower all students with the skills and habits of mind they need to fulfill their potential as learners and human beings. Unfortunately, the school's orthodoxy undermines my humanist approach to teaching and creates deep division among our diverse population, destroying any chance at a true and unified learning community. Dwight Englewood used to claim that we teach students how to think, not what to think. But sadly, that is just no longer true. Yeah, okay, so Foundation Against Intolerance and Racism. Don't think that FAIR is... Uh, a proponent of critical race theory in this diversity, inclusion, and equity. They're not. Otherwise, they would never have posted this video on their site, but they're fighting critical race theory. Yeah, why aren't we getting anywhere? Well, you know, it's not just in our schools. It's in our um, medical profession, medical schools, Universities, colleges, private schools, public schools, military, government, it's all over. Wow. Boy, it's funny to have lived a time seeing, witnessing Americans, all of us, healing from our past, watching, you know, the obvious the the incredible success of black Americans. And now, this is where we find ourselves? Massive gaslighting. That's what's so upsetting to me. People are not seeing that this is coming at a time when it makes obvious that those who are pushing this are profoundly mentally ill. I also just came across this, and there are parents out there who have a tremendous amount of courage. There's not enough. We need every parent, every teacher, everyone who is against, all adults who are against critical race theory, the students, they need to be speaking out and fighting in unison to you know, to combat the web, the well-funded organization that is stopping, stopping all of those against critical race theory, 
the only way to combat them is to have a force as strong. And we can have that because I do believe most Americans, and that includes the liberals, that includes Democrats, that includes black Americans and uh, Mexican Americans and a whole lot of colors. That's not what you're hearing on mainstream media. It's the right. It's the Republican parents who are fighting this, making it that divide and conquer left and right. Um, well, I don't like, I don't like profoundly uh, narcissistic, psychopathic, um, and evil people winning. They win. I don't like that. Okay, let's listen to what he has to say. I'm going to I am quote asking you to make your comment, I'm but do not do name do not calling talk like over you me. just did. This is my comment, not your comment. I'm quoting to you now from the United States Supreme Court 1964 case, New York Times versus Sullivan. This is constitutional case law in this country, and I'm quoting you from the U.S. Supreme Court. The, just, the judges wrote that... This nation is founded on the, quote, profound national commitment to the principle that debate on public issues shall be uninhibited, robust, and wide open, and that it may well include vehement, caustic, and sometimes unpleasantly sharp attacks on government and public officials. That's constitutional case law in this nation. I don't have to be nice to you. Nobody behind me has to be nice to you. If you don't like living in the United States of America, then you can all move to Russia, Cuba, or China. This is the First Amendment. And I will, I will, caution, you, I will caution you, solicitor. There is a video camera to my left. If you edit this tape, then you're going to have a big legal problem on your hands because my right to critique your fascism, which is what this is, is constitutionally protected. There are emails, public record emails, in which the Director of Equity is lobbying and advocating for public comment to be censored in this school district. And you know what? You know what? Lobbying for it, advocating for it. We've got the school board president saying she'll do better at hitting the moot button in blatant violation of the Constitution for her lobbying and her advocacy of unconstitutional censorship. I want you, the school board, to terminate the employment of Dr. Charissa Gibson with immediate effect. <laughs> terminated her employment, I want all of you to tender your resignations for hating on this country. We have a God-given constitutional right to critique you, and we can speak in any lawful tone that we see fit. And don't go looking around, Benito, because this is the United States of America. You have a good... Uh, one more thing. I want to make a verbal request right now for an unedited copy of the tape. So if any of you delete it, you're going to have a big legal problem. Now, can you imagine... All parents just like him, not just like him, but as uh, forceful as he is. Uh, everything that's going on in our country is unconstitutional. We do not have a constitution. Uh, nobody in the federal government, certainly Congress and the White House, they haven't been, uh, uh, well, oh, that oath that they take. They violate it. They know they're going to violate it. Um, and it's unfortunate that most Americans really are still delusional, thinking that we're still living in the United States. Okay. Yes. Big applause to this man. It's only 11.07 a.m., and I'm calling it. This parent who went off on the board in the Pensbury, Pennsylvania School District has won the Internet. Well, he won my heart, that's for sure. Now, what was he talking about? He was talking about um, people lobbying. They were, they were lobbying and, and, well, let's just listen to that part again because that has to do with the, uh, with the video, with everything that I say going forward. Because my right to critique your fascism, which is what this is, is constitutionally protected. There are emails 
public record emails in which the director of equity is lobbying and advocating for public comment to be censored in this school district. Okay. Not just that school district, all over. All over. California, Loudoun County will be my examples. Big tech, woke leftists crush school parents fighting critical race theory. There is a lot of money behind this crush. Now, what took place? The Loudoun County parents, uh, they started to go fund me. And, well, they raised $4,000. It ain't enough because what, you know, their opponent is so well-funded. All right. Uh, they have a group called Parents Against Critical Theory. They collected 4000 as of March 22nd of this year. Loudoun County School Board Equity Committee member Charlotte McConnell said committee members and the school board should report the page. The page on GoFundMe was reported three days later. GoFundMe shut them down telling the group founder, Scott Mineo, he had engaged in prohibited conduct. What that prohibited conduct was, well, just like YouTube, just like Facebook, just like Twitter, you never really get to know what you have done. They shut them down. Okay. Now, just knowing that, should raise eyebrows, should beg questions. And everybody should come to the same conclusion, which is, that's not right. Okay. That's because the Democratic uh, Party is behind all of this. And, well, big tech, the Democrats, they all, they all are in bed together. So Loudoun County, crazy. Diversity Council says... We can and we will silence the opposition. In a series of now deleted social media posts, Loudoun County Public Schools Minority Student Achievement Advisory Committee. Oh boy, public schools are spending so much money on all of these consultants and trainings and committees and yada, yada, yada. Well, this committee threatened that they can and will silence the opposition of their mission dedicated to advancing equity through action. The posts, which encourage people to avoid sowing seeds of untruths, hate, and distrust, were reshared by at least one school board member of Loudoun County. There is strength in numbers, and we believe wholeheartedly that United we can and will silence the opposition. We ask that you please support our call to action by engaging in these five small but impactful actions to help us in our mission of advancing equity through action. Okay. Those tweets were deleted. And then another tweet came. Uh... Oops, sorry. That original statement that I made about, well, uh, it's our mission. We've got to silence these people, silence the opposition. That was shared in error. This is what that committee said. While we stand behind the five call to action steps, which I spent way too much time last night trying to find those five call to action steps, and failed. Uh, anybody want to take on the job? Go for it. Um, the post that accompanied them was shared in error. It was a personal statement taken out of context and not at all reflective of the committee or Loudoun County Public Schools as a whole and does not align with our mission and goals. Do you believe them? I don't. We are fully supportive and welcoming of all opposing views. 
and the rights of those who hold them to be able to express them in a civil manner, we do not condone violence nor threats of violence. Oh, how sweet. Okay, a lie. Abject lie. There's another group, Facebook group, named Anti-Racist Parents of Loudoun County. 624 member strong. It's a private group. All right. Uh, they're going against the Parents Against Critical Race Theory. Beth Bartz. I watched the school uh, board meeting um, on this Beth Bart. Well, Bartz, plural. Okay. Uh, by way of Facebook group, Beth Bartz has encouraged teachers to post the personal information of students' parents who oppose the inclusion of critical race theory in London, in Loudoun County Public Schools curriculum. Bartz has actively encouraged teachers to post the names, workplaces, and home addresses of these parents. Bartz has even gone as far as to ask teachers to name the children involved, their schools, and to post photos of their parents to the group. This is clearly a direct call to action to target, harass, and intimidate parents simply for their opposition to the far-left cynical curriculum Bartz views as doctrine. Okay, when this came out, the school board censored her. She, she basically got, you know, a slap on the wrist. She should have been fired immediately. Fired immediately. But she wasn't. So parents were calling uh, for her resignation. Now they're calling for the entire board's resignation. Um, for her inexcusable actions, very dangerous actions. Dangerous Marxist violence right in this woman, and she's still on the board. I don't think, I think part of her reprimand includes not being able to say anything during those meetings. Okay. Loudoun County Chardonnay Antifa. That's quite the name. Chardonnay Antifa upgrades their ticket to hell with F. God, uh, the board members, Loudoun County Public School board members are part of this group, Facebook. So, Loudoun County Chardonnay to Hell, Antifa. Now, I don't know if that's their actual name or if uh, the parents opposing critical race theory has just labeled them as such, but they up their vile rhetoric with a big F God 600 plus members of this group, including board members, NAACP, Loudoun County Commonwealth Attorney. Okay, you do know that George Soros has kind of, you know, placed uh, attorney generals, state attorney generals all over the country. All right, well, Loudoun County Board of Supervisors and parents that should probably not have kids. These are just a few of the comments. Heartbreaking. Heartbreaking that parents are fighting critical race theory because, well, they're viewed, they're presented as, they're cast as racists. They don't want real history being taught. None of that is true. Uh, well, you just listen to the English teacher talk about what that critical race theory and that diversity, diversity, inclusion, and equity program is doing to children. This is clear child abuse. It is child abuse to do what they are doing. They're splitting apart, you know, friendships in schools because of, oh, the focus on race. All right. Um, the... I know I get sidetracked, and I'm sorry. All right. The creepy gym teacher, I don't know if you heard his um, speaking out at the school board meeting, but he said, I, I can't, you know, 
um, he would not admit that, admit, no, wrong word, he would not go along with the program, the transgender program. And he was Christian. He said, you know, no, uh, we have two sexes, you know, female and male. Well, what did the school board do in Loudoun County? They put him on administrative leave. Then there was a, a, a court case, and the court ruled that Loudoun County did not have the authority to, you know, um, first of all, compel speech from that gym teacher uh, to go against his uh, principles and beliefs. So Loudoun County School Board is now appealing it, spending taxpayer money doing all of this. So that gym teacher, well, because he's uh, apparently he wants to hurt trans kids. Really? Okay. And yes, you get it. Well, again, here the Sheriff's Criminal Investigation Division is reviewing the matter, the matter of Beth Bartz and the Facebook page and uh, wanting the names, the addresses, the children's names, the schools they go to, doxing these parents, pictures of the parents. So there's a criminal investigation uh, going on, but the group's activities might be no surprise to top law enforcement because the county's prosecutor, narrowly elected with the help of nearly a million in cash from George Soros, appears to be a member of that Facebook group. Wow. Okay. So, again, Loudoun County Public Schools, uh, Loudoun County government called in for reinforcements for what? That last board meeting that I posted yesterday? Was it yesterday? Okay. They call in reinforcements to show up at the school board meetings and speak against what the parents who are against critical race theory are saying. So when I listened to that, and it was over two hours, and they cut that board meeting short, um, I was listening to all of these people, ostensibly parents, wanting these programs, wanting critical race theory, wanting, uh, you know, the transgender, the implementation of, well, I say that I'm a girl. Uh, yeah, I'm still a boy, but I, I say that I'm a girl. So call me what I want to be called, and I get to go into girls' bathrooms and into the locker rooms and play on their sports team when that's very biologically unfair, right? So you see all these parents, they're getting up and they're rah, rah. This is fair. Now, I listened to this. I don't know who she was, all right? Um, but was saying that transgender students, you know, it was a historic moment to right the wrongs of our history with, by letting, letting a transgender, uh, is it girl? If you're a boy, I don't, I get confused, but to let them into the bathroom, that's historic. Okay, who were they calling in for that meeting? Tuesday, June 22nd, right here. Loudoun County Democratic Committee, the AFL-CIO Union, Planned Parenthood, Equality, Loudoun, Loudoun PFLAG, Equality, Virginia, Loudoun County Public School School Board, Loudoun County, I don't know what the BS is, and the NAACP. Wow. 
Well, it's obvious that they're feeling how strong these parents are getting. Um, they certainly are a mighty force in Loudoun County. I watched another school board meeting yesterday in, I think, Dallas, Texas, which I never... I watched about an hour of it. it. That was about five hours long. So, and another packed house, you know, in Dallas. Um, parents are fighting it all over the place. They're getting stronger, but they need immediate reinforcements themselves to go against. This is just Loudoun County. This is happening across the board. The Loudoun County Public School Superintendent, Professor Ziegler, continues to lie about critical race theory being in Loudoun County Public Schools, which is really pretty amazing because, well, I came across an awful lot of slides that shows it is absolutely being implemented in Loudoun County. That's why he says, despite the evidence, but Democratic candidates state critical race theory is a right-wing conspiracy concocted by Donald Trump and Glenn Youngkin. Well, I don't know who Youngkin is, but yeah. These radicals are busing people from across the D.C. metro area again. So apparently they bust in their reinforcements to go against the parents who do not want these programs. They just want their kids taught math, science, English, you know, how to write, how to read. Um, Bussing them in. Okay. This is happening. This is not good. Teachers told to be extra careful keeping radical ethnics lesson from parents. Really, California. Here, Christopher Rufo, which, if you don't know anything about critical race theory, I would go and go to Christopher Rufo's site because he has done a tremendous amount of research and his articles are very well written. Okay, so last year, Santa Clara County held a teacher training on how to deploy ethnic studies in schools. The leaders began the presentation with a land acknowledgement claiming that the public schools occupy the unceded territory of the Mowik, uh, Mowikma Ol Own Nation. I'm sorry for mispronouncing that. You can check out the slides by clicking on this tweet. Uh, let's see. The president... Um, the presenters claim that America is a system of oppression based on the invasion of white male settlers and exists as long as settlers are living on appropriated land. This is a Marxist um, takeover. And if people don't start joining hands to get rid of this critical race theory from all institutions, you can kiss the property that you have right now goodbye. No kidding. This is where all of this is going. White males brought white supremacy, patriarchy, classism, genocide, private property, and God. That's, you know, what they are saying about our history is true. We changed. You know, it's like one individual who does the work on themselves can actually uh, heal their traumatic backgrounds and change their behavior so they don't hurt other people. So can a nation. So can a collective populace. And that's, we should be celebrating. You know, what we became, well, forgetting about everything else <laughs> that we are, but okay, but this is not what's happening today. So there's got to be, well, a more fair, um, uh, uh, yeah, 
Everybody needs to be treated with respect. Unfortunately, an awful lot of individuals don't know that. But going about it this way, pretending, gaslighting everybody, claiming that all of this is still going on, that's the sick and twisted part. George um, Pas Pasco, an advisor for the state ethnic studies curriculum, said that teachers must awaken students to the oppression. See, this is all the students are, they're burdening these students with this. Um, awaken students to the oppression and lead them to decodify and eventually dismantle the dominant political structures which enable white people to exploit people of color. These students are being segregated. They are being categorized white against non-white. And, you know, how far did we come? You know, I've posted videos years ago saying it was so nice to be in South Carolina uh, to see how far we have come. You know, my area, Anderson, South Carolina. And you would see black and white kids and, you know, non, just minority um, kids, whatever color, they're all hanging out. They're all friends. You know, I would see on the sidelines of a uh, soccer field where these 10 year olds were brought to play soccer and the fathers were out and they were, you know, coaching and uh, being the referee of the game. And the moms were all talking to one another, yakking it up and laughing with one. And they all black and white. They're tearing this apart. Everybody should be upset about this. So the panelists advised local teachers to hide this political program from adv administrators and parents. District guidelines and expectations are barriers, said one panelist. We have to be extra careful now that we're in people's homes due to the Zoom, the remote learning. That's right. So you can take a look at all of these slides. Uh, it's right there. These are the slides from, you know, the schools. <laughs> it's amazing. And they're bringing this to kids that hardly even know, you know, how to critically think yet. That's the abusive part. Now, brilliant article, Barry Weiss. I have my, you know... Uh, well, forget it. It doesn't matter. Um, so this actually was on City Journal, which I believe is Christopher Rufo's um, site. The miseducation of America's elites, affluent parents, terrified of running afoul of the new orthodoxy in their children's private schools, organize in secret, give pseudonyms, and turn off all of their videos when they meet for these clandestine clandestine Zoom calls. They're scared. And this is in Los Angeles, private school, very, very expensive private school. They're scared. They're scared to speak up. That we got ourselves into this position is not good because those who are implementing Marxism here in the United States are winning. We've got to find our courage. Now, I'm going to do a part two showing how intricate is this, what's going on, um, and how people are being trained by foundations and then placed in uh, schools, administrators, principals, by the very, very wealthy foundations. All right. Huh. All links are below. <laughs>